Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to all of you to the worship of God. We are so glad that you are here. And if you are a visitor, we're very glad you're here. We hope that you find this time meaningful for you in worshiping with us. Also, I want to welcome those who are online with us. Uh, even though you're not here present with us in the sanctuary, we are glad that you are here also. Um, we hope that worship will be interactive enough so that you will feel that you are a part of the worship also. I want to say thank you to Linda Hall for being our liturgist for today and for Mike Yaros, who is our new uh, interim music director. So thank you both for being here. CDC guidelines. Just so you know, we are still going with those guidelines, highly recommended by the CDC to wear our masks. So I know there are several of you that are wearing your mask to feel safe, and that is fine. I had my mask on before I started to speak, and I will have it on at the end. So um, we just want everyone to feel comfortable. Please note some of the announcements that are in the bulletin. Next week, we have a baptism of Matthew uh, Westick, and so I hope you will be here. It will be a time for the children to come up and actually see the baptism really, really close during the children's time. Also in October, we are starting a, an adult class at nine o'clock, and that will be um, the fascinating stories of the early church, which I will present, and Judith McLean will do the fascinating stories of this church. And she has some really good stories and rather funny stories also that she's already shared with the transitional team. I'm gonna turn it over to Linda Hall just for an update for the transitional team and the self-study. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> nice to see so many people here. I put a little blurb in the um, news to know now. If you saw that, then you probably know what I'm going to say, but we're kind of finished with the collecting, organizing the data that we've collected from you as well as the people in the community at large. And so now we're into the writing phase and we are, our plan is to have it to the presbytery in December. So that will be a big moment for us to get it through all the places it has to go. It will start with you. You will see a copy of it. The session will see a copy of it. And then there are two committees at the, in, at the presbytery that will look it over. So looking for A pluses all the way across. Thank you. I also want to uh, share with you prayer needs uh, at this time. I talked with Jim Offerman, and he still wants your prayers. He still is having some um, health issues, but things are going well for him. Uh, Starla also needs your prayers as the caregiver and also um, with her own health issues. Also, I talked to Esther Grabbit, and she is doing better, even though she's still in Regency. And believe it or not, I saw Shirley Hart. I made an appointment, which you have to do, to go to Meta Lodge, and I spent about an hour with him. He told me the entire history of this church and some, um, some comments of, no, I was going to say comments about you all, but no, he didn't do that. It was a wonderful time. Shirley is actually doing pretty well, um, and so he was very talkative yesterday. It was wonderful to be with him. I talked with Linda um, Body, who had surgery on her back. She hopes to be here next Sunday uh, to see the baptism of her grandchild. Um, however, I'm not sure she's going to be able to sit through the whole whole service. So um, we're glad about that. And she is very thankful for all your prayers. I also just learned that Barbara Randall, Barbara Randall, who is the mother of John Kendrick, uh, um, and she has gone to Beaumont Hospital with some problems with the pancreas. 
So please keep her in, in your prayers. Also, I got two prayer requests from Jim Fisher, one for Nora Higgins, who is a good friend of his, who had a stroke uh, this last week, and Carolyn Newman, who has just been diagnosed with ovarian cancer. You'll have an opportunity to share your joys and concerns during our prayer time, but I just wanted to let you know about all of those people that were listed in your bulletins. Are there any other announcements or concerns that I might have forgotten? Let us worship God together. We are gathered here to worship God. Please join me in the call to worship. The birds and animals have much they can teach us. Ask the creatures of earth and sea for their wisdom. All of them know that the Lord's hand made them. It is God who directs the lives of his creatures. Everyone's life is in his power. Let us worship our creator, the one who created all of us. Please join in the singing of hymn number 285, God You Spin the Whirling Planets. much in common. We have all sinned and done wrong toward our fellow human beings and toward God. But we also believe that when we confess God is gracious and merciful to us, let us join in the prayer of confession. O oh Lord God, you told us that whoever wants to be first must be the servant of all. But we long to be first and dread being last. We want to climb every ladder, frame every achievement, and obtain every compliment. Forgive us. Teach us to reframe our priorities. Teach us to be servants first. Help us to let our lives flow from faith in you.
Amen. Through the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord, Jesus Christ, we are forgiven for all of our sins. Through God's forgiveness, may we be strengthened to do God's will. Amen. Please rise. I would invite all the children to come up for the children's time. Have a seat, guys, if you want. Here they are, come. All right. So how are all of you? Come on up. I love it. Andy's here by herself. You're all good? Okay. So, um, what happened before you came to worship today? Did you go to the Christian education room? Did you eat a lot? No. no. Not much. Not much? Um, what did you have to eat? A cupcake and a cup of fruit. Okay. And oh, some of juice. And some juice. Okay. All right. Dane, what did you have? I was sitting right next to you. About the same, I bet, huh, Dane? Yeah? Okay. Okay, so um, today I'm going to be uh, teaching about geese. That is what we can learn from geese. So what do you know about geese? Yes, Lindy. When you get too close to the nest, they can hiss at you. Oh, you are right. They can hiss at you. You're right. What else? They fly in a V pattern, so like they don't get tired, so they're very smart. They're, they are very smart, and they fly in a V pattern. Very smart. What else do you know about geese? Anything disgusting about geese? They poop a lot. They do. They poop a lot. <laughs> You're right. I knew, I, I was hoping that someone would say that because I'm going to say that in the sermon. What's that? You were thinking of it, but you weren't sure whether you should share that, right? Okay. Well, let me tell you about this goose. This goose's name is Gertrude. Uh, yeah, and, and it's in honor of Gertrude and Albert. They were two geese that came to our land, and they, they um, had a little egg. They planted an egg um, by our dock. And we thought we were going to see, see a little goosling, but some other animal decided that the egg was for eating. So Albert and Gertrude didn't come back this year, which made me very sad because uh, we had become friends with them. However, we have lots of geese where I live because we live near the Black River. And we had to put a, a um, string fence up so that they wouldn't come into our yard because we might have them, we might have 50 geese in our yard and we have a big garden and so they like to they like to poop in the yard, yes. So it's a mess, and so we have to always clean that up. But is there anything, um, other than what you said, is there anything else that we can learn from geese? Yes, Oli. They make a lot of noise. They do, they honk, don't they? 
Do you know why they honk? The, okay, well, I, do you, does anybody know why they honk? To communicate. That's right, to communicate with each other. If they think they're threatened, like what you said, Lindy, about you know if you get near their, their um, nest, not only will they hiss, but they will, they will honk. And that will tell all the other geese, get out of here because there's someone that's threatening us. But they also honk when they're in the V formation. Why do you think they honk then? To maintain the V. To maintain the V and to encourage each other that they're going in the right direction and to stay in the V. We have a lot to learn from geese, from God's creatures, the goose. So, oh, last question I have for you. What do you think the name of the um, male goose is? What do you think his name is? He's a gander. And the female goose is really a goose. That's really the female name. And what, what, what would a baby goose, what would that name be? Gosling. And if you have lots and lots of geese like we do on our land, it's a gander. You go, can you remember all of that? Yeah. Well, tell Michelle Fisher when, and, and your teachers when you get to Sunday school that you know those, okay? I saw a geese egg in the water. You did. You saw a geese egg in the water. Okay. 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 So are you all ready to go to uh, church school? Okay. Let's pray before you do, okay? Let us pray together. I'm going to say a line and then you repeat it, okay? Oh, Lord God, thank you for geese. Thank you for what they can teach us about encouragement and being community. Amen. Thanks for coming up, everyone. See you later. Have a good time. Isn't it wonderful to have children in church? It is wonderful. We're going to sing Psalm 1, and it is on page 158. That's where the words are, but it goes to the melody of Amazing Grace. So as I have said before, if you read music, don't read the music. Just <laughs> sing the words to Amazing Grace. And we're going to stay seated to sing Psalm 1. with the
Okay, the New Testament gospel reading this morning comes from Mark, and it's a familiar, it should be a familiar story to you. It's where Jesus is kind of taking a teachable moment with his disciples. Listen for God's word. Then they, Jesus and the disciples, came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. And the New Testament epistle reading is taken from James 3, verses 13 through 18. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with the gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, above, but is earthly, unspiritual, and devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. This is the word of the Lord. Let us bow in prayer. O gracious and most holy God, we give you thanks for your word to us. We give you thanks that you give it to us so that we might live with it and know it. Lord God, help us to understand what you have to say to us today. And I pray personally, if my words are your words, they be remembered. And if they are not your words, they be forgotten. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. As many of you know, this is the third week in a four-week sermon series about learning from God's creatures. The first week, we learned from squirrels about how to be resilient and agile and adaptable when things change in our lives. The second week, we learned from the honeybee about being and doing community with everyone using their talents, knowing that everyone has a job for the good of the whole. And this week, geese. Some of us only see geese in a negative light doing things that make them a bit troublesome. Yes, like Jonathan said, like pooping over all of our sidewalks and our lawns. Like slowly walking across a road while we're honking our horn because we want to get to our destination. And how they sometimes stubbornly come at us when they are protecting their young or some other prized possession. But geese have some very positive traits that we can learn from, particularly in the area of leaders and followers, being community where encouragement rather than criticism exists, 
helping each other stay on the right path, being in the right direction, God's direction. But I'm, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. First and most importantly, we must look at our scriptures for today. They have much to teach us about community and encouragement as we fulfill our roles as leaders, elders, and deacons, and followers. Now, in all three of the scriptures that we read and sang for today, Psalm 1, Mark chapter 9, and James chapter 3, we see comparisons of going in the wrong direction and going in the right direction, following the path that God wants for us. Let me explain. Psalm 1. Hear the actual words from the song. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or take the path that sinners tread or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord and on his law they meditate day and night. Comparison. Going in the right direction, guided by God, or going in the wrong direction, the ways of the wicked. Mark 9. Listen again for the comparison. Going in the wrong direction or going in God's direction. We hear in Mark 9, Jesus confronting the disciples about their argument among themselves as to who is the greatest among them. Wrong direction, according to Jesus. So Jesus sits the disciples down and he says to them, whoever wants to be first must be last of all and the servant of all. James 3. Now in James, there is a comparison between what we perceive as wisdom and what really is wisdom coming down from heaven from God. Going in God's direction or going in our own direction. Listen for the teaching from James. Where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality and hypocrisy. Listening to all three scripture readings, this is a very tall order for us as the church, as community. Going in God's direction is hard. Many times it goes against our human nature, our human desires. Going in God's direction becomes hard work for all of us, because we have to do it in community. We can't be divided. We've got to do it so that we do it together. Hard work, together. So in my opinion, we can learn from God's creature, geese. Despite their negative image, they have much to teach us about living in God's community, being wise and going in the right direction, encouraging each other, whether we are leaders or whether we are followers. But the person who says it best is Bob Stromberg. He is a very mesmerizing comedian. He wrote a poem about geese and what he observed about geese. So here is his poem, The Geese, by Bob Stromberg. 
please realize that this poem is written in a male voice, but you're hearing it in my voice. This is my goose. At least I say he's mine, and I suppose he is for a time. He's been injured, you see, so for a little while he's staying with me. No eagle claw or hooked beak, furled brow, now those he has no need. For he's quite content to fill himself on things among the weeds, like small fish. It's a dainty dish if you're a goose or a swede. <laughs> that is not to say, however, and it would be wrong to think that he is weak, not strong, like the eagle. For though the eagle may be stronger in the fight, more fit for the kill, this goose can fly further and longer than any eagle will. Oh, I've heard much lofty talk about eagles and falcons and hawks, and it's not my desire, nor would I conspire to put those big birds down. Who would dare? Because when I watch them flying as high up there, sometimes but a solitary dot, I can but gaze and wonder and utter, my gosh, look at that. But as I've implied, whether in the trees or in the sky, eagles, falcons, and hawks are almost always alone, or at most in twos. And that's what separates those birds from this goose. I suppose those in Iowa and Nebraska, footnote, I have lived there, I suppose those in Iowa and Nebraska would know it best because the sky is bigger out there in the Midwest. But even as a lad nestled in the Alleghenies, I looked forward each spring to seeing as many as a thousand geese arrowing into view over elm and maple and white birch too. One day, Lying alone in the lawn on my back, hearing the drone of some distant train on some far off track, I saw before my eyes, 5,000 feet high or more, a sight which to this day, I must say, I've never, ever seen before. The head goose, the leader of the geese, suddenly veered out, leaving a vacancy which was promptly filled by the bird behind. The former leader then flew alongside. The formation continued growing wide, and he found himself a spot at the back of the line. They never missed a beat. Well, I was on my feet gaping mouth, gazing south, wondering what on earth I'd seen. I told my friends. They said, so? I said, so? What do you mean, so? Have you ever seen anything like that before, Mark, Jay, Paul? They said, nah. But don't be a bore. Let's go to the park and play ball. So we did used to play a lot of ball when I was a kid. And that was that. Well, now I'm an adult. And I'm very busy. I suppose that is part of being grown. But the point is, I seldom have time alone. Not least, lie on the lawn looking for geese. But if I do see some, it's more or less luck or I'll see a goose and think, and really, it's a duck. Or I might catch a glimpse if I'm stuck in traffic, and that's why I'm thankful for the National Geographic. 
because they told me what I now tell you, and if you don't believe what I say is true, then you can go and look it up. What I witnessed that day as a child is something that's been going on with geese in the wild since the very first spring. You see, their bodies are streamlined, their neck like a spear, slicing the wind and breaking the air. And from the ground, it's impossible to see, but those wings, they are not flapping randomly. When the head goose grabs that air, air is displaced, which then rushes up to reclaim its place, only to see the smiling face of the bird who's flying behind, whose wings just happen to be in the downward position, a very dangerous position, which doesn't last for long because that upward rush gives him a push and they're right back up there where they belong. That bird then gra grabs the air again, causing another upward wind which lifts the bird behind and so on and so on. It goes down the line. But the head goose shields the wind and all the rest are carried by him in varying degrees, of course, from the back, which is best, and the front, which is worse. With very little effort, I'm, I've, told, I've been told and have heard on the part of any one bird. Because when the head goose has had enough, he or she simply drops back and depends upon another bird for strength when strength is what is lacked. So that's how I found out how the geese can fly from way up north to way down south and back again. But he cannot do it alone, you see. It's something that he has to do in community. Listen, these days it's a popular notion and people swell with emotion and pride when they think of themselves on the eagle side, solitary, self-sufficient, strong. But we are what we are. That is something we can't choose. And though many of us would wish to be seen as an eagle, I think God made us more like the goose. So my, my advice as your pastor is this. When you look up into the sky in the autumn and in the spring, and you see those geese soaring by, remember, like the geese, God made us to live in community, united in Christ in one body, to strengthen and encourage each other to go in God's direction. Now, some of us are leaders and some of us are followers. And yes, we make a big deal out of ordaining and installing the leaders of the church, elders and deacons. Why? Because they will lead us for a time in the ways of God honking encouragement to us, just like those geese honk to each other with encouragement. Then our leaders will step aside for others, perhaps yourself, in a future time to be a leader, an elder, and a deacon. However, no matter who humanly leads us as a church, we must always remember that Jesus Christ is the one who directs our steps and is the wind beneath our wings. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. It is at this time that we are going to
install and ordain our leaders, elders and deacons. So as I call your name, would you please come up? And I'm going to ask the elders to stand on this side, facing the congregation, and the newly elected deacons to stand on this side. Marilyn Dunn, Jan Hansen, both elders, Bill Kerr, Sharon Levine, Matt Lozen, and Barbara Wright, all elected elders. And deacons that have been elected, Sue Mervick, Peggy Ruthven, and Jackie Green, and she is running up the stairs right now, I think, so that she could be here. We're just going to wait a few minutes. So meditate on these people that are standing in ahead of you, in front of you. They will be your uh, leader, new leaders. Uh, some of them have been elders and deacons before, and uh, Barbara is the only one that will be ordained today. So now that Jackie is here, we're, I'm going to ask all of you some questions. But, but first, hear the words of Scripture as they come to us from 1 Corinthians 12. To each is given a gift of the Spirit to be used for the common good. Together we are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Within our common ministry, some members are chosen for particular work as ruling elders and deacons. God has called you by the voice of this congregation to serve Jesus Christ in a special way. You know what we believe and you understand the work for which we, you have been chosen. Show your intention by answering the following questions. Do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? If so, answer, I do. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testament to be, by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authorita authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you? If so, answer, I do. I do. Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? If so, answer, I do. I do. Will you fulfill your ministry in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? If so, answer, I will. I will. Will you be govern, governed by our church's polity and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? If so, answer, I will. I will. Will you, in your own life, seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ? love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? If so, answer, I will. I will. Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? If so, answer, 
I do. I do. Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? If so, answer, I will. I will. Now this question is only for the ruling elders. Will you be a faithful ruling elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? And will you share in the government and discipline, serving in councils of the church, and in your ministry? Will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? If so, answer, I will. And this question is only for the deacons. Will you be a faithful deacon teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? If so, answer, I will. And Shelly, if you want to go up to my uh, microphone, that would be wonderful. Shelly. Kamar is going to, as the clerk of session, add, ask the question of the congregation. Do we, the members of the church, accept Marilyn Dunn, Jan Hansen, Bill Kerr, Sharon Levine, Matt Lozen, and Barbara Wright as ruling elders, and Jacqueline Green, Sue Mervich, and Peggy Ruthven as deacons, chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ. If so, say we do. We do. Do we agree to pray for them, to encourage them, to respect their decisions, and to follow as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is the head of the church? If so, say we do. We do. I would ask Barbara to come forward to the center. And Barbara, you have a choice as to, I didn't talk to you beforehand, you wanted to stand here? Okay, good. I'm going to invite all of these, all of these people that are here, if you're comfortable to come and lay your hands on Barbara and anyone else who is an elder or deacon to please come forward. If you are not comfortable coming forward to lay your hands on Barbara, please stay in your pew, stand up and just put your hand out so that she knows that your hands are on her. So please come forward if you would like to put your hands on Barbara. This is a tradition that actually comes from the Apostle Peter uh, because hands were put on Peter when he became uh, the leader of the church. So it's quite the tradition. As you can see, half the church has come up. <laughs> That's a really good sign. It's community. Community. That's right. Being leaders and followers. Let us pray together. O oh, gracious Lord God, you who are our Savior, you expect a lot from us. But we, it is such a privilege, Lord to be your children, to be your church. And Lord God, I ask that you bless all the elders and deacons, all the leaders of this church, that we might be faithful to you. And Lord God, I especially ask that your hand be upon Barbara as she leads with those who are her ministry colleagues, other elders. Lord God, I ask that you give her lots of imagination and energy and intelligence and love. Lord God, we are grateful that you are our leader and that you lead us in the right direction. Help us to be faithful. We pray all of this in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe that Shelley has some certificates to hand out to those of you. Congratulations to all of you.
We're going to sing together uh, Seek Ye First, which is very appropriate now that we have ordained and installed our new leaders. Please rise for Seek Ye First, number 333. God has been gracious and generous with all of us, giving us blessing upon blessing every day of our lives. So let us return to God a portion of what God has given to us. Let us share our tithes and offerings. God, you have given us the privilege to give back to you a portion of what you have given to us. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would use it for your glory and for your ministry among us and out in the world. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks. Thank you. It is at this time that I ask you about your joys and concerns. We did share some things about people that need our prayers in this congregation and beyond this congregation. So are there any joys or concerns that you would like to share with the body of Christ? I also meant to ask if anybody had a prayer card. 
if you filled out the prayer card that was in the pew. And you're all doing well. <laughs> Amen, for sure. We do need to pray for different places in the world. We still need to pray for Afghanistan, for the recovery of um, people cleaning up after the hurricane, for the fires in California, uh, for being community as a, as a country. Um, so there's a lot to pray, pray for. And I know that there are probably prayers on your heart um, that you're not going to share, but we will pray about those people also. So let us pray together. Lord God, we give you thanks that we can come to you and bring our concerns and our joys to you. Lord God, we are thankful that you bring joy to our lives. We are thankful that you give us comfort and you give our friends comfort and peace and your presence and your provision. Lord God, we rely upon you and we trust you. Lord God, we pray particularly for those who might be battling physical or emotional, spiritual needs. Help us to be your ambassadors of the love of your son, Jesus Christ, in the lives of those who are around us, and even in the lives of those that are beyond our reach, but that we can at least pray for. Lord God, we give you thanks that it is in your son, Jesus Christ, that we elect new elders and deacons. We ask, O oh God, that you would bless them all. Bless our leaders and bless those of us who follow, that we would be a beacon of light here on this corner. And Lord God, we give you thanks for your son, Jesus Christ. It's always in his name that we pray, the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Let us sing together our last closing hymn, God of the Sparrow, number 272.
please turn in your bulletin and, <clears throat> and share with me the benediction. Let us say it together. May the God of peace be with you with everything you <coughs> will. And may God work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom is the glory forever and ever. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and abide with you today and tomorrow and all the way into eternity. Amen. Before we leave, I just want you to know that there's lots of food in those Christian education rooms, so make sure you go in there, have something to eat, some coffee, whatever, and see the kids. Blessings to all of you. Thank you.